Well, recently I came across this blog post um, from a travel insurance company in the United Kingdom. It's called Get Going. And they came up with this post about the, um, the travel-related illnesses most likely found in select countries. And they actually listed um, about the top 10 or so uh, riskiest nations for travel according to their statistics. And I wanted to go ahead and take a look at uh, at least the top five that have the highest uh, degree of risk according to their, uh, their data. And we see that India has the most risk, followed by Indonesia, Kenya, Peru, and Thailand. They're all considered very high risk. And this is followed by Sri Lanka, Dominican Republic, Mexico, South Africa, Costa Rica, Cuba, and Egypt. And again, this is based on their numbers, uh, the, the degree of risk, the how much their average cost of claim is, and uh, other types of data. So let's take a look at these five countries um, uh, briefly and see what kind of risk are there in these countries if you travel there. And of course, India, it was number one on their list. And if you're going to go to India and all the countries, uh, you got to make sure you're routine immunizations are up to par um you know the mmr and um, uh, diphtheria tetanus um, pertussis and many of the others um, hepatitis a is also an issue to be protected against and um, that is an issue in india as it is in many countries uh, concerning typhoid fever the CDC says that more than 80% of typhoid fever cases in the U.S. are in people who travel to India or other countries around South Asia. So that little part of the Indian subcontinent. So if you're going to be there for even short-term travel, uh, typhoid vaccine is recommended. Uh, Japanese encephalitis. Um, it, they do have Japanese encephalitis there. However, uh, CDC says they've never seen a traveler um, bring back a case that went to India. But they do recommend that travelers that are going to spend at least a month in the endemic areas during the season. And this the season for Japanese encephalitis is monsoon season, which is from about May through October. Uh, that you should um, get, the, uh, get the JE vaccine. Now, rabies is a huge issue in India, and they have the highest burden of human rabies in the world with about 20,000 human cases each year. And it says dog, dogs roam in packs in many areas of the country. And one of the issues there is that human rabies immunoglobulin is not readily available except in some clinics in major cities. So, And there's a, a place where you can check with the International Society of Travel Medicine to find out um, what clinics are good for um, rabies post-exposure um, prophylaxis. Um, they don't, even though there's a lot of risk there, they don't necessarily uh, recommend uh, pre-exposure uh, prophylaxis. But if you're going to be doing uh, very long-term travel there, uh, missionary work or other work like that, you may want to consider that. Um, cholera is not a big issue in India, but it's in parts of the country. Um, so, but the cholera vaccine is not uh, routinely recommended. Um, malaria. There is some malaria in India. Um, and you would want to check with your travel medicine person to find out if you're going to be in an area that requires um, um prophylaxis. Other issues over there is India is uh, really a hotbed for uh, multi-drug resistant bacteria, um, E. coli, Klebsiella, and, and the like. And a lot of these strains are resistant to a lot of normal um, antibiotics like third generation cephalosporins, uh, fluoroquinolones, and even colistin. Uh, dengue is endemic all throughout India. Um, except in the most uh, mountainous regions. So you'd want to take uh, precautions against mosquito bites while you're there. 
true with chikungunya also, the same thing. Hepatitis E is being recognized more frequently in travelers to India. Um, so you may, you may want to be concerned about that. Uh, animal bites, in addition to rabies, um, there's the herpes B virus, which is carried by old world monkeys and can, may be transmitted by active macaques that are being kept as pets, inhabited, and those that inhabit many of the temples that are scattered around where tourists go. A very serious disease, so uh, keep that in mind. Traveler's diarrhea is a huge problem in India with an estimated 30 to 50% likelihood of developing diarrhea during a two week journey. And of course, TB is a big problem there. So yeah, a lot of different health issues uh, that you could get uh, traveling to India. So be properly prepared. Uh, the number two country on their list was Indonesia. And um, the CDC recommends that you're vaccinated against hepatitis A. Uh, contaminated food and water um, is an issue throughout Indonesia, no matter where you're eating or staying. Um, it's recommended that you um, are vaccinated against polio. Um, and it says, if you will be in Indonesia for more than four weeks, the government of Indonesia may require you show proof of polio vaccination when you are exiting your country. So make sure you're on top of that. Typhoid is also another issue in Indonesia. So, um, you know, um, you may want to be aware of that. And CDC does recommend the vaccine for most travelers. Um, in other travelers, you know, hepatitis B could be an issue and that's transmitted through sexual contact, contaminated needles and blood products. So the CDC says that you should get this vaccine if you might have sex with a new partner, get a tattoo or piercing, or have any medical procedures. Uh, Japanese encephalitis, again, an issue. You may want to consider this vaccine if you plan to visit rural areas in Indonesia or will, or will be spending a lot of time outdoors, even for trips shorter than a month. Uh, malaria in Indonesia. Um, of course, no matter where you go, you, you want to avoid mosquito bites. Um, you may need to take prescription medicine before, during, and after your trip to prevent malaria, depending on your travel plans, where you're going, uh, when you're traveling, and if you're spending a lot of time outdoors or sleeping outside. Areas of Indonesia with risk of malaria includes all areas of eastern Indonesia, um, but there's low transmission in rural areas of Java, um, resort areas like Bali. So yeah, make sure you check with your travel medicine uh, clinic or advisor. Uh, rabies it, it is an issue in Indonesia. Um, and the CDC recommends vaccine just for the following groups. Uh, travelers involved in outdoor and other activities. Um, people working with and around animals, like vets, uh, if you're going to be taking a long trip or moving to Indonesia, or children, because they tend to play with animals and they may not report animal bites. Um, there is no risk of yellow fever in Indonesia. However, the government there requires proof of yellow fever vaccination only if you are arriving from a country with risk of yellow fever. Of course, this doesn't include the U.S. So Indonesia was their top two um, uh, riskiest nation. Three was Kenya in, in Eastern Africa. And the CDC recommends the hepatitis A vaccine in, in Kenya, regardless of where you're eating or staying. Uh, typhoid is also an issue, so be vaccinated against that. That's a recommendation. Um, cholera vaccination may be considered for adults who are traveling to areas with active cholera transmission. Um, areas of active cholera transmission are localized to the country, counties of Embu, Garissa, Istola, and several others. So um, check with your travel medicine expert on that. Um, cholera in, is rare in travelers, but can be very severe. So uh, you want to be um, very uh, conscientious about uh, unsafe food and water and washing your hands um, frequently. Um, 
Hepatitis B, again, an issue, um, as I mentioned in the, in the previous part. Um, malaria it says you want to talk to your doctor about how to prevent malaria while traveling. You may need to take prescription medicine before, during, and after. Areas of Kenya with risk of malaria, it's present in all areas of Kenya, including the game parks, um, including the city of Nairobi. So keep that in mind if you're going to travel to Kenya or if you're going to go on a safari of some sort. Uh, parts of Kenya are located in the meningitis belt. Uh, so you may want to uh, be make sure you're vaccinated if you're going to, especially you're going to be traveling there during the dry season, which is December to June. Um, that's when the uh, meningitis is most common in Kenya. Uh, polio vaccine, probably be a good idea if you had, had that, if you're going to go there, especially if you're going to be working or volunteering in a healthcare facility, a refugee camp, or some other humanitarian aid setting, because uh, that could put you in risk, put you at risk with somebody who has, actually has polio. Um, rabies uh, vaccine, pretty much the same criteria as, um, as Indonesia. And yellow fever is a risk in certain parts of Kenya. Um, so you may want, you need to check with your uh, travel health um, expert concerning exactly where you're going and whether you need yellow fever vaccination. So Kenya was number three on Get Going's list. Uh, number four is Peru. Uh, Peru, of course, is in South America and it hugs the uh, Pacific coast. Um, but it also goes up into the into the Amazon basin area too. So it, and it borders a lot of countries, Colombia, Brazil, Bolivia, etc. So it covers a lot of area. Um, and like with the other countries, hepatitis A, typhoid, these are all things you should be aware of and, and uh, highly recommended to be vaccinated against. Hepatitis B, um, malaria when you're traveling to Peru, um, areas of Peru with a risk of malaria, all departments that are less than 200 or excuse me, 2000 meters in elevation, uh, including the cities of Iquitos and Puerto Maldonado. Um, the areas where there's really no risk is like in Lima, um, some highland tourist areas like Machu Picchu and along the Pacific coast, according to the CDC. Rabies, again, same issue as the other countries. Um, if you're going to be in some kind of high risk situation, you may want to get uh, uh, vaccinated. And yellow fever is recommended for all travelers um, nine months or older going to areas of elevation of less than uh, 7,546 feet, uh, particularly in the regions of Amazonas, Loreto, and several other areas. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, a lot of areas of South America um, is our risk for yellow fever. And let me close it out with their number five country that are their number five riskiest nation, which is Thailand. And Thailand, of course, is in uh, Southeast Asia, bordering Laos, Cambodia, and um, very close to Vietnam. Um, rabies, in addition to your routine uh, vaccinations, um, rabies should be something to be aware of. Um, they do say that hospitals and clinics in Bangkok do cater to expatriate community and medical tourists, so rabies PEP is pretty readily available there, but not all hospitals in Thailand carry human rabies immune globulin. So keep that in mind. Uh, Japanese encephalitis is endemic throughout Thailand and transmission occurs year round. Of course, there's seasonal epidemics during um, May through October. But they're saying the, the Japanese encephalitis vaccine is recommended for travelers who plan to visit Thailand for 
uh, greater than one month. So uh, the highest rates of human disease have been reported from the Chiang Mai Valley. Hope I didn't uh, say that wrong. Cholera, not too much of a risk um, in Thailand. Malaria, malaria is a big issue, particularly in certain areas of Thailand. The rural forested areas that border Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos, and several other areas. Um, prophylaxis is recommended for travelers visiting any of these areas. Um, malaria, or trans, malaria transmission in Thailand occurs year-round, and most cases are due to Plasmodium falciparum, uh, with uh, a smattering of the rest due to, due to Plasmodium vivax. So... Um, Atovaquone, Proguanil, or doxycycline are recommended anti-malarial drugs for travelers to Thailand. Dengue is an issue um, uh, in Thailand, and peak transmission is now during the rainy season. Um, so you should always take um, uh, measures to prevent mosquito bites, um, and that includes Zika too. Um, while a lot of the... Um, areas of Thailand have clean water, there are still uh, areas that where you can get traveler's diarrhea. So um, practice good precautions with food and water. Um, and it says bring an antibiotic for self-treatment of moderate or severe diarrhea. Because fluoroquinolone resistant, resistance is widespread in Thailand and other areas of South Asia, zithromycin may be preferred according to the CDC. And here's a disease we haven't encountered yet in this in this discussion. And that's melioid, melioidosis, um, which is highly endemic in northeast Thailand, and also there's a high number of leptospirosis cases found in the southern and northeastern regions of the country. And both these diseases are found heavily during the rainy season, which is July through October. So if you're an adventure traveler. Um, Eco traveler, and you're going to have exposure to water and soil. Um, be aware of these diseases and um, ensure that any open wounds are covered to prevent exposure. Um, so, and make sure you have the proper footwear and stuff like that so you don't get a cut on your foot, etc. etc. So, um, and there's a there's some other risks they mention here, and one is sexually transmitted diseases and HIV AIDS. It says Thailand is a popular destination for sex tourism. Although illegal, sex work is practiced openly across the country. A 100% condom program with sex workers helps slow the spread of HIV and other STDs. However, approximately 450,000 people were living with HIV AIDS in Thailand in 2014. So, uh, Travelers should be aware of these risks and always use condoms during sex with partners whose HIV status is unknown. So, anyway, so those are the top five countries with the most risk, according to um, the travel insurance uh, company in the UK called Get Going. So, if you want to check them out, um, look them up on Google, Get Going Travel Insurance UK, and... Uh, I hope you enjoyed this program. Um, comment below, share it with your friends, make sure you like it, and of course subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to check us out at the website, OutbreakNewsToday.com, the podcast, Outbreak News Interviews, which can be found on the website, on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and Spotify. And the Outbreak News This Week radio show, which is aired Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in the Tampa Bay area on AM 1380 The Biz or online streaming at 1380thebiz.com. And check out our social media presence, Facebook at Infectious Disease News and Twitter at BackDman63. Outbreak News TV is a production of The Global Dispatch. Copyright The Global Dispatch Incorporated. 2019.